Hey guys, it's 5.28 p.m. on January 11th, 2018, and I have been digging into this Q thing ever since really it began. And uh, I haven't piped in on it because I've had some very mixed feelings about it. And I understand a lot of the excitement and the enthusiasm people have in uh, pursuing this. I, th I think it's awesome that people are digging in to investigate questions about the behaviors of certain key officials. I think that that is critical that people um, become aware of the corruption that's in our government. I think it's awesome that people start waking up. So I am all for a lot of the good things that are coming from this QAnon phenomena. Now, for those of you who may not know what I'm even talking about, I'm just going to give you this uh, really quick summary here uh, about the QAnon phenomena. Okay, the storm has arrived. You guys may remember that Donald Trump said that this is a quiet before the storm. Well, shortly thereafter, this guy Q started showing up on this, this web channel called 4chan. And it says here, uh, this is a good summary. Someone very, very close to President Trump has been dropping crumbs about global events from behind the scenes. He calls himself Q. He started at the end of October on 4chan and has continued ever since. And a lot of people, as this thing has caught on and, and gone viral, you have a lot of people investigating these little leaks of information. And how the information is being leaked to us is in the Socratic method. It's like a puzzle, okay? And what it's doing is it's asking people questions like, who controls North Korea? Who really controls North Korea? And, and people are doing investigations and, and sharing their findings from their investigations in these public forums. And I think that that's awesome because what it does is it takes our, our social media and turns it into an open forum for open source information and information sharing. However, <laughs> there are things about this Q thing that have bugged me from the beginning and I want to just share just my very first impression that went awry. As soon as I started, as soon as the stuff that Q leaked about Saudi Arabia, and then there was a plane crash. Okay, so people died. Here, the QAnon deep bloodbath moves to Saudi Arabia um, as Trump NSA forces continue rampage. A helicopter carrying senior government officials has crashed in the Asir region in southwest Saudi Arabia, killing this prince and other officials. All right, that is where all of a sudden I started getting a really bad feeling about this because even though this did not happen within the confines of the United States of America, the very notion that there could be somebody next to our president who knew that these guys would be assassinated troubled me greatly because we are a nation of laws, not a nation of men. We in our country have held to the firm belief since the, since the creation of our country that all men are to be held accountable to the law and that no man was above the law and that the very corruption that we're trying to weed out with these exercises like Q's Socratic question puzzles is, is, is the very corruption of people not being held accountable to the law. So, so when I started hearing people applaud that these supposed, you know, these guys are supposed to be bad guys and it was a good thing that, you know, the, the swamp was being drained in Saudi Arabia and people were applauding this, I started getting a bad feeling in my stomach because that's not how we operate. Our country, what makes our country awesome is that we are a nation of laws. Now, granted, this is international waters. This has nothing to do with our country, but but it, it, it does have something to do with our country and that our country is applauding circumventing habeas corpus for people and that our, our country is applauding that some people could be assassinated. And look, you guys, here's the thing. Whether it's your last name is Rothschild or your name is Bundy, it doesn't matter. You are to be held accountable to the laws that you break, and you are supposed to be given a fair trial and, 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 and representation. Okay, so, so when I start hearing people talking about, about people being sent to Guantanamo Bay, I get a little concerned, not just a little concerned, actually now you guys, I'm almost at the point of being horrified. So what I want to do is I want to share some clips and I want you to listen carefully to the concerns I have because I'm not hearing anybody bring these concerns up. Okay, so it's not like I'm anti-Q or anything or it's not like I'm anti-waking up America. But here's my concern. If, if, if we're waking up to a constitutionless government 
we might as well just go back to sleep because there are some things here that are being said by these Q proponents that it's very disturbing. And I'm going to bring you to this clip here from this guy at InfoWars to share some of the concerns I have. This is a 21st century war that's fighting, that's being fought right now. And it, it's not with guns. It's not with knives. It's not physical. This is an intellectual, spiritual, political battle where we elected Trump, not a career politician, not the deep state, not a corrupt politician, not Hillary Clinton. And so now he's in there as an American patriot, actually trying to fix all of the wrongs that have been waged on this country by D.C. Okay. Let me just correct something here, and I want and, and, and I don't look at you guys. Listen to the words I'm telling you. Don't jump to conclusions about what I'm saying. I want you to listen to this video to the very end because what I'm telling you is true. We elected Trump to be the president of the United States. That is a very limited role. Okay, we did not elect him to, to purge the deep state, the dark state as everybody's calling it. I'm telling you there is no distinction between the dark state and the deep state and the state. It's just a mess. And it's a mess because we have all these people subverting this. This is the Congress. This, I mean, this is the, the, um, the Constitution of the United States. This is what we elected Trump to uphold. We elected Trump, according to the powers defined in this document, to be the president of the United States. Nothing more, nothing less. And the very problems that we are trying to weed out are the people who have subverted this very precious document. In fact, the mantra of the QAnon people is make America great again. Okay, they call it MAGA. Make America great again. In order to understand that, you have to understand what made America great in the first place. What made America great in the first place, you guys, is this constitution where we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, Establish justice, justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for a common defense, promote general welfare, and secure the blessings of our liberty to ourselves and our posterity, ordained this constitution. Our constitution is unlike any constitution in the entire world, which is why our country is unlike any country in the world. What makes our country so amazing, guys, is our constitution doesn't identify to protect the, the liberties of the people. What it does is it identifies and protects the links to which the government can exercise power. Our government constitution constrains the government. It doesn't liberate the people. It governs the government. That is the entire purpose of our constitution, is to constrain the exercise of unlawful power. If people act against the constitution, what they're doing is they're taking power that is not a, a, a assigned to them. But we as a people have assigned certain powers and certain roles. And within those roles, certain things are supposed to happen. The president is supposed to act in a certain way. The chief justice is supposed to act in a certain way. The prosecuting attorneys are supposed to behave in a certain way. Juries are supposed to assemble in a certain way. Judges, law enforcement, all these things are defined and they are not supposed to go beyond them. And it is the very corruption of the power grabs that have happened over the last you know, five, six, seven decades that have made our country so corrupt. But it's really critical to remember that what makes our country important and what makes our country great is the very thing that's going to make us great again. And that is, that is operating within the strict confines of the Constitution, which means our president has to operate within the very strict confines of the Constitution. But that's not exactly what I'm hearing the... Um, that's not exactly what I'm hearing the QAnon crowd call for. And it's certainly not what I'm hearing the QAnon crowd clap and applaud for. So let me just keep playing this clip. For decades. That's the war. This is a this is a war that's going on right now where you have a real president that actually wants to help people, help America, do the right thing, as opposed to the former presidents who had their own agendas, their own goals, they were bought and paid for, that who knows when or if they ever thought about America's well-being. So that's So let's just be very specific here because I do not disagree with him on this. I want to, I want to make it clear guys, I don't disagree with him on this. The war that we're fighting is that we have had people operating outside of the interests of the United States, but I want to be really really specific about what the what the interests of the United States is. This is the only common interest we all have in the United States. This is it. 
This is the rule of law. Okay, so it's because we've had decade after decade of, of you know, lifetime politicians who have come in and literally subverted the Constitution in their power grabs and their illegal activities. We have not enforced the Constitution upon these people that we're in the mess we're in. Okay, so right out of the box, I just want to say the most important thing we can do is expect that the people who are going to clean the house are actually going to abide by the laws of the house. And this is the law. But that's not what we're seeing. And this is the thing that's concerning me. First we have this guy, then we have this guy going into another um, assertion here where he talks about Trump being... Trump is essentially a, a 21st century warrior for the Republic. Okay, I can understand where people would want to say that about Trump being a warrior for the Republic. But let's be very specific. He is the President of the United States. Not a warrior for the Republic. There are certain limits to what he can and cannot do. And it's only in abiding in those very limits that we're not going to see a repeat of what we've been seeing for the last seven, eight decades. Okay? But that's not what he's advocating. Listen to what he talks about here when he talks about Trump. You know, becoming somebody who can lift up... Think about up that, too. Think about that angle. What if you have a, an operation... I mean, think about it. Think about a three-man team of Elon Musk, Donald Trump, and Julian Assange. What could they not do? What could those three men not accomplish? I'll tell you what they can't accomplish. They can't accomplish anything more that's in the uh, the Constitution of the United States, at least for P Trump. The, the, the role and the very specific limited role that's defined to him in the Constitution, because we did not elect Elon Musk. We did not elect Julian Assange. We elected President Trump to be the president, and that's all we elected him to do. But listen. And how, I mean, they could lift humanity to, to levels that we can't even imagine right now. I mean, the... In okay, do we really want Trump to lift humanity to levels that we can't imagine right now? That's not a rule that's, that's, not, that's not something I find here in, in the Constitution, you guys. I don't see anything about the president lifting humanity to levels we can't imagine. Okay, I, I don't, I personally, I've already got a savior. His name is Jesus Christ. I invite you guys to investigate who the savior is that's going to lift humanity to a whole new level. I, I am not going to go for this. This is not, it's the, the, Donald Trump is only the president. He's not the savior of the world. And yet the messages that we're getting here are, are, are getting kind of scary because it goes on. He goes on here. Information that Julian Assange can get his hands on, probably already has the access to, the sources that he has. Elon Musk's mind, his brilliant engineering, making rockets that can land and launch again. I mean, this is incredible stuff. And Trump is working with them and, and building a team of patriots here to take over the world for good. Okay, I'm sorry, guys, but that's not what the president of the United States does. The president of the United States, nowhere in the Constitution does it say the president of the United States is supposed to build a team of patriots to take over the world for good. This is delusional. I don't care if you're a left or a right or whatever paradigm you fall into politically speaking, I am pointing you to the document that made America great in the first place, and you're not going to find that as an objective in here anywhere. And yet that seems to be, that seems to be the objectives of this QAnon crowd. And I'm starting to wonder if really QAnon might not be something designed to do exactly that, to get the expectations of this guy Trump beyond the role that he's supposed to be handling, which is the role of the president, as limited as the power is, to get people to start cheering for him to exceed the role of the president. And this fantasy that he can somehow elevate humanity and, and, and take over the world for good. You guys, this is not what's defined in our Constitution. This should actually horrify you, okay? Because there's some things that have been going on in the history of, 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 of our media and our history of our government where, where we've been misled, we've been given trails of data to come to certain conclusions, whether it was, you know, airplanes flying into buildings, you know, that, that got us to agree to going into wars, or it's uh, airplane bombers, or what are they, underwear bombers that get us to agree to, to having, um, you know, those sensor things that you have to go through at the airport. We've been given a bunch of lies in the past by our government. And, uh, you know, there, there, there's just some major problems here. And, and here's one of them. Let's just listen to this clip here where he talks about, he talks about an example of one of the things that, that, that this QAnon is exposing. And the conclusions he draws are very, very dangerous. And I'm going to play this for you. 
and their quote unquote from Peter Stroke insurance policy that was the fake Russian collusion story that they used the fake dossier to spy on the Trump team and to use that as evidence. Well, they're looking into that now. And that is another example. Who is going to be called to task at the end of that investigation? Hillary Clinton, her brainchild, her funding through conduits like the DNC, and then the Obama Department of Justice with the ORs working with Christopher Steele and Fusion GPS. So we already know that's what happened. That's my problem right there. That is the problem with what's going on here with Q, is that people are, are, are being led to certain conclusions based on research that is being fostered by the Socratic method of question answering so that people will specifically come to certain conclusions. And what's the conclusion? The conclusion is we know what's happened. You guys, I'm sorry. In our constitution, we do not know. According to the laws and the, and the, and the assignment of powers, we have, con we have, as the people of the United States of America, agreed that until a man has been brought to trial, we don't know. <laughs> the, the thing is, is we, we call it innocent until proven guilty. We have values of habeas corpus in the entire world. That's one of the things that, that people adhere to. We don't know. And I'm very concerned about this fact that people are concluding that they actually do know before there's been a jury trial. Even Hillary Clinton needs to be brought to what? To justice. What does justice mean? Justice means that we have prosecuting attorneys who do investigations, who arrest her according to certain charges, who bring her charges before the public. There is a trial, a jury, and everybody gets a chance to hear what's happened, and it is the jury that decides what we know. We have agreed to this. This is something that we have consented to. We, the people, to establish justice, have set up this process. So this whole idea that we know, you guys, are you overthrowing the Constitution on purpose? Because the Constitution says we don't know. We don't know until the trial has actually happened. See, this is one of the things that really very much concerns me. I'm going to take you to another clip here. And well, before I take you to another clip, let me just tell you the consequence of us believing that we know. I'll refer you to December 7th, 1941, when we knew that the Japanese had bombed us. We knew that, right? You guys, there are some things that we think we know, but it's only because of the way the media has put it together. In fact, one of the things we're fighting here is Operation Mockingbird. We're fighting that. So just the idea that we know something because it's been planted or seeded and we're being led by certain breadcrumbs into a certain conclusion, you guys, the whole concept that we know is in direct con conflict with what we've established for justice that says we don't know. We don't know until a man has been proven guilty in front of a jury of his peers. Look, you guys, I don't like Hillary Clinton any more than anybody else does, but she still deserves a day in court. So for him to sit there and say we know these things, look, we have to say we don't know. We have a lot of evidence. We've got compelling information. I'm glad we're doing the research to find out that we need to bring this woman to, to justice. But, but we have an established system of courts to handle this, okay? So, so there are a lot of seeds that are being planted by this QAnon thing that are very dangerous. Our Constitution says we don't know, but this QAnon force is saying we do. Now, there's a problem with this, and, and, and I didn't quite, I wasn't able to pinpoint it until I heard this particular clip from this guy. This is my um, only issue. My only issue is... I watched this video here uh, from Lift the Veil where he's, this absolutely has nothing to do with Q. Okay, so what the clip I'm going to play for you has nothing to do with Q. But this, there's this guy who calls in, his name is Dave Acton, I don't know him at all. But he, he, he makes a point about social bots. And what he says about social bots, like a light, it like went off in my head. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the problem with Q. So I'm going to play what he says about social bots. And hopefully you guys will understand what I'm concerned about with Q because I don't think that they're any different. I think that what's happening here is the exact same thing. So let's listen to this clip here from, from this guy, Dave Acton, who, like I said, I don't know. And they just, they just found an account. Somebody had an account the other day. They had 350,000 Twitter accounts. 
And so the only issue, and this, this I think is the takeaway, this I think is the takeaway issue on this. If we're going to have bots and we're going to have social bots and we're going to have Twitter bots and we're going to create synthetic consensus mm -hmm. and we're going to go out and direct people into different actions, it's, it's, we're, we're right on the cusp of directing people to say, well, this guy is a sexual predator. There's been 50,000 people that have come out and said he's a sexual predator. We should go over to his house right now, drag him out in the middle of the street, kill him and burn his house down and create a mob rule. Mm -hmm. And whenever that gets close to that, that's when I get the hairs on the back of my head go up a little bit. Like, do, do people realize where this is headed? Mm. And that's where I got a little kind of absurd with Quinn and talking. Okay, so he goes on to talk about the actual subject he's talking about. But I think the crossover is significant. That what I see happening here with the crumb leaks from Q is that they're very specific. They're, they're, they're drawing people to a very specific set of conclusions and conclusions with an arrogance that bypasses the Constitution where we actually have people con convinced that they know that these people are guilty. You guys, that is 100% against the Constitution. The, the conclusions that, that, that is, that's, it's almost like a synthetic, it's, what concerns me is that it seems like Q is fostering a synthetic sense of consensus about things and getting people to subvert the Constitution without even realizing they're doing it. It's getting people to be so convinced that they know what happened, that they're willing to applaud the very actions of subverting the Constitution that we want to fight, okay? You hear about people who, were, um, who, who are being sent right now to Gitmo, to Guantanamo Bay. You guys, that's, that's not how we do, that's not, how, that's not our justice system, okay? It's a consequence of what, um, of what uh, what's his name, Obama did. You know, when he signed the NDAA, that we could have, we could hold uh, Americans without a writ of habeas corpus. You know, th this is really scary stuff. And yet you guys, and this is the subversion of the Constitution that, that's created all sorts of damage to us. And yet you guys are applauding with the certainty that you know that these people who are supposedly being shipped by plane full to Guantanamo, are, that's good. You guys, that's not good. You don't know, and we can't subvert the Constitution to, to, to enforce the Constitution. That's completely counterintuitive, you know? And you guys call yourselves, you guys call yourself nodes. That's the thing that just is so kind of disturbing about this, is what he's saying about the social bots that are being used to create a synthetic consensus. You guys, if, if look, Lenin or Stalin, I don't know which one, said, lead your own opposition. If you don't understand that, that the very reason the Smith-Munt Act was put in place on purpose in the very beginning when it was, when it was set up was to protect us from government trying to, trying to create a synthetic consensus with propaganda, and if you guys don't know that that Smith-Munt Act was repealed recently, the last couple of years, then you guys don't realize the risk you're in in following this QAnon phenomena with such fervor and, and not, not being critical of how the, the actions that are being taken by our government are being taken. Because Trump is limited in what his scope of power is. Trump is limited in his reach. And he has an obligation to be held accountable to the American public and can tell us what he's doing. And the fact that everybody's so excited that he's operating in this clandestine way, and, and, the, and from the evidence, you guys, the evidence that you guys are bringing forward that there are people literally looking to see, you know, who, who, who's in Guantanamo and who's been sent there. You guys, that's subverting the Constitution. What's the matter with you people? That's the very action we're trying to clean the swamp of. You see? And you're applauding it. So I take big issue with this. I think that there's some real problems here. You know, and, and then he talks about news becoming a call to action. I think that this is critical. Let's listen to this clip if it'll cue up here. When the LARP thing got started and they were they were doing recycling of intelligence, when when George and, and Goodman were like, oh, we just got this information in, and then somebody would call it, oh, we got this information in. So by their own admission, they said that they were kind of creating intelligence and a fusion center kind of thing. That's what I thought in the LARP game was dangerous when you create urgency and you create this, oh, we got to do this now. Oh, we got to do that now. And then that's what led to the crescendo. That's what led to the climax of somebody calling the port. Right. So it's not a news commentator. Uh, it's a news commentator has a show and 
you know, he's just giving information and there's no real urgent call to action. I mean, that's what America is all about. My concern, just like the, just, and Jason does this too, this, this very veiled threat of gang stalking and crowd stalking and all the rest of it, where he kind of is directing it. Okay. He's talking about, he takes it in a different direction, but the whole concept that, that there's a sense of urgency that everybody has to jump in and come to these conclusions by following this with this little trail I'm wondering, you guys, if this isn't just a trail of blood, okay? A trail of blood where we're turning into a pack of wolves. And I have a very good reason for saying that because you have somebody here within your own camp. Um, his name is Potter. Let's see. Um, Potter. Now, this guy's within your own camp. And how do you guys handle handle this guy? Potter. Well, he comes out. <laughs> he comes out and he says, look, you know, it, it, apparently things had gotten to what's called level DEFCON one non-nuclear, which is a really serious, uh, I guess, condition for security for our country or something. I'm not that familiar with it, but he's supposed to be a former colonel from the army. And uh, he comes out and he's like, look, this is getting really serious. Uh, Trump needs to start speaking directly to the American people, which, by the way, that's what is uh, is what is laid out in our Constitution, that, that we have an open and free press where our government's transparency happens between this communication between our government and ourselves and in the media. And uh, the president is supposed to be speaking directly to the people and, and being honest and, and not cryptic and not, not giving us puzzles. Okay. So when the, but, but here's the problem is that as soon as this guy comes out and I'm going to close some of these windows here, as soon as this guy comes out and starts calling for that, you know, he's, he's been a diligent worker as far as I know in this QAnon thing. You know, he, he went through and he followed the crumb trails and he did the research with the rest of you guys. He's out there trying to wake up everybody. But listen to what he says. Uh, I don't know why I'm smiling. You'll have to pardon me, everybody. Hey, this is a, kind of an emergency alert. Uh, I was just on Twitter. You know, I've been going back and forth. Uh, I can't give you all the information, but I've been kind of calling on a Trump and Q to stop this puzzle business and to just play, start talking in plain language. And I know a lot of people are going to get upset about that. And boy, did they ever. But I don't see anything wrong with that. He's actually calling for the president to do what he's charged to do within the Constitution of the United States. Speak in plain language. Come out and talk to the American people. Give us understanding of what you're doing. You're the president of the United States. You are accountable to us. We need to know what your actions are. Okay. We also allow for the president to, to not have to account for everything out in public because maybe there is some more, you know, undercover work that needs to happen behind the scenes. Okay, fine. But don't leak it out to us in, as, as, a, as, as a riddle, you know, because the conclusions that we're coming to you guys are very frightening. And what ended up happening was this guy sat there and he called for the president to speak in clear language, which, by the way, the Constitution demands he does, you know. But instead of following the Constitution and having you guys back this guy or maybe come after him and say, look, you know, the president has a good reason for not coming out right now and giving us all the information on the stuff he's he's investigating. No, that's not what you guys that's not how you guys handled it. You guys were like a pack of wolves. You went after him like a pack of wolves out for blood. You know, I'm going to bring you to this clip here where Nathan at um, Lift the Veil shows, right shows some things that this April to June was reposting on these Twitter comments. You know, Potter's a wannabe. He has a real need for acceptance and relevance. He's recommended the psychopath to his followers. And they go on to, 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 to bring in innocent people and call them pedophiles. And I think people confuse Satanism with, okay, whatever. But, but there's... Um, yeah, they just, they really, this gal, April Lejeune, who's supposed to be a QAnon person, I guess, I don't know, but she brought out like a pack of wolves. Here she's retweeting something, and check this out, Potter's a wannabe, he has, he has a real need for acceptance and relevance, he recommends this psychopath to his followers, they even share drinky poos in their vids, that, that, that's monograph. And the uh, video linked here and monograph we've dealt with before on this channel, um, who's worked with Dave Acton, we have video from Dave Acton today. Let me see if I have that queued up. Yes, that's Dave Acton covering this. Everybody's all over Potter. 
so so they call out Potter's a wannabe then they call out monograph as a child pornographer I mean wow this stuff gets crazy I hadn't even seen that yet so anyway what he's going on here about is he's, he's like you guys are you guys are just going after each other. And, and it's ridiculous. I mean, all the guy did was come out and say that, that Trump should be communicating directly with the American people according to the Constitution. The, you know, there's the, the, he's not supposed to hide in some cryptic thing. Now, granted, if there is a strategy behind the secrecy, okay, we can appreciate that as a people. There's nothing in there that says that he can't operate in ways that, you know, in the interest of the American public. But that's not what's happening. That is not what's happening. What we see is we have people leaking, we have this, 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 this consensus driving, it's almost like, do you guys remember, do you guys remember Cass Sunstein in the Obama administration? You know, it's, it's like we're being nudged. Cass Sunstein had this, uh, had this psychology and, and ethics of persuasion where he actually um, argued that they should have, um, you know, subversive people go undercover in social media and, 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 and form consensus you know, these nudges influence us in subtle ways, in, use, using cues to help us better, you know, go along with the agenda of the government. You know, that's what that's what Cass Sunstein's idea was. And, and, they, and they've been putting this into place in, in our government for a long time. So I, I have to wonder, are we being nudged to overthrow the Constitution of the United States? I mean, that's the thing that really concerns me here. You know, and and I'm and I'm looking like okay. I want to I want to bring you to this clip here, where I show I want to show you Tracy Bean's um, trailer for her channel because I think that there's some stuff here, guys, that is really wrong. idea whose time has come cannot be stopped by any army or any government. This is kind of a confusing, confusing clip here to me. It's, it's actually kind of very troubling to me. And the reason it's troubling is because all these people who are in the QAnon force, ebb and flow, their, their, their mantra is make America great again. Well, what is this idea whose time has come that cannot be stopped by a government? I'm sorry, guys. But the government that we have is the government that made America great in the first place. This is what will make America great again. So this idea that an idea has come, the time has come for this idea that no government can stand up against, that ought to concern you all because the government that we're trying to make great again is the government of the Constitution of the United States of America. So the fact that people are sitting here applauding that, that you have people in planefuls going to Guantanamo Bay, you know, that ought to scare the crap out of you because that's that's completely subverting the very government that we want to make great again. You see, so I, I'm I'm a, I'm a little concerned about how this is becoming such a such a it's it's like it's propaganda almost. You know, it's like it's propaganda to get everybody to come uh, to to accept things that are completely subversive to even the basic writ of habeas corpus to applaud to applaud airplanes full of people that crash. To, to, to only lament that, that, that Lynn Rothschild wasn't taken out by the airplane over her house. You guys, that's ridiculous. If Lynn Rothschild is a criminal, bring her to trial. If these Saudi Arabian princes were evil, bring them to trial. But that's not all. I mean, that's not all. We have people completely um, applauding this. And, and I'm calling out Son, Sean over at SGT Report because I respect Sean and I like Sean a lot. But man, his recent video here, um, you know, heralding this 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 we, we QAnon can... thing, is actually very terrifying to me because none of you guys have mentioned the Constitution, you know, and you're so willing to applaud the subversion of it that it's actually getting to be a little scary. We've been letting all this stuff go on, all all of us under our noses, for a long time, 
for many generations and people are finally starting to wake up to it and the more important thing is they're actually starting to do something about it okay we're starting to wake up to the problems in our government but what exactly are we doing about it other than applauding some very subversive actions that have been taking place in government we're not seeing the arrests and you know sean is like well what do you say to critics look guys it's not critics of of QAnon, we're saying you guys have to enforce the Constitution. The reason people aren't embracing this, if they have half a wit about them, is because they're not seeing the Constitution be the standard that's enforced. It's not that, that, that Q is, is wrong or there's anything wrong with getting these leaks of information, but the conclusions that people are coming to, the things that you guys are applauding, those are the things that are terrifying. The fact that you guys are acting like you guys are chasing after voodoo to see if Hillary Clinton has what footwear is concealing her her little tether on her ankle. That's voodoo. That is voodoo that is not endorsed by the, the justice system that we have with the Constitution and the open free press that we're supposed to have line of communication with our government. Look, if you guys are, are comfortable with overthrowing the Constitution and you guys are all about these executive orders and, and you guys think that that's cool, then it, just come out and admit it. Admit it, the Constitution's over. If you don't think the Constitution can, can endure our president saying, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm arresting Hillary Clinton. You know, if you think that we're going to have some civil war <coughs> because Hillary Clinton gets arrested, then just admit that the Constitution's over and we are, we are in a new day and time and we're making a new country. You know, don't say make America great again. Change it to what you think it should be, which would be make America great. Call it MAG, not MAGA. Yeah. No, people are becoming engaged. And uh, what do you say to the skeptics out there who, and I get a lot of comments below my videos, and I'd say that a good 10% of them, maybe slightly more, 15, 20% are, I'm not going to believe this until I see the arrests. I'm not going to believe Q is real. Q is a psyop, etc., etc. And again, though, we see so many good things happening. We see Representative Steve Scalise making a PSA about the plague, the epidemic of human trafficking in the... United States. Okay, so Scalise makes a, a, a public service announcement about human trafficking in the United States, and that's a good consequence of Q? I'm sorry, Sean, that's a very bad example. Because if, if this guy Scalise is, is knowledgeable enough to make a public service announcement about human trafficking, and there are no arrests of the human traffickers, I'm saying you guys might as well just be, he might as well get up there in a tutu and do ball, ballet. Because it doesn't advance the, the, the re restoration of our republic at all. It doesn't have anything to do with draining the swamp. Just because there's, he's telling us that there's human traffickers out there, until he actually uses the Constitution and enforces it, what good is a public service announcement? Come on, you guys. This stuff counts. Why are you cheering the, for a public service announcement? That's not going to do any good. Arrest the criminals. If you actually have enough authority and knowledge, to know that there's human trafficking out there and the best you can do is come up with a public service announcement, I'd say you're dropping the ball of enforcing the Constitution because I'm telling you guys, clearly, our government has a system of law that's capable of prosecuting pedophiles and human traffickers with the laws we have right now. So if this guy is sitting here making some sort of a public service announcement and there are no arrests, I'm saying you guys are cheering for the wrong thing. You guys are being misled. You guys are being, you guys are, are falling for a LARP. We see President Trump signing an executive order targeting human rights abuses. And on that very same day, we see Alphabet's Eric Schmidt resign. Okay, how on earth are you considering that this is a good thing? An executive order of targeting human rights abuses? Don't we already have that? Do we need an executive order? Because I'm telling you something right now. This does not support executive orders. It's the executive orders that have gotten us in, the, in, a, in a problem in the first place. What's the difference between the executive order that seems to catch, go after people of human rights abuses or this one? Our, our constitution can clearly handle people who've, who've done human rights abuses. We don't need an executive order for that. We have, a we have a constitution. We have laws of our land. We have people who we've appointed to in particular positions to do the investigations. We have judges. We have laws. We have, we have you know, criminal justice system to handle people who do that. We don't need to extend the, the power of the government to, to writing executive orders. What's the difference between that executive order and this executive order? 
You know, if you guys want to create a new government, then then be forward about it. Be honest about it. But that's not what you guys are doing. That's not what you're talking about. You know, you're ta you're applauding the subversion of the very constitution that needs to be upheld for our country to be great again. You're applauding this. And I'm saying that's the exact opposite of what we need to be doing. Look, if there are abuses for human rights, guys, we have the means and methods to, to enforce those laws right here with the limited power of the government. We've given them the power. Let them use it. Let them prosecute according to that. We don't need to have executive orders. Executive orders are the very thing that go against the Constitution that we are trying to restore. Unless maybe you guys aren't trying to restore the Constitution. Now I'm just going to bring you one last clip here from, um, from uh, what's his name, um, Hagman and Hagman here, where Tracy Bean shows up on, on Hagman Me, and Hagman. I don't know if you feel this way, and, I, and I've talked with some people who, who do feel this way. It almost seems like we're living in a kind of a third world environment where uh, there's really no justice out there, or at least no justice for those people like um, Hillary Clinton and, and others, um, Comey, uh, if you want to throw him in there. But, but it seems like there's, there's this, um, this lack of justice for the, for the elite and powerful. There's a protected class, and that certainly takes the wind out of many people's sails, and it kind of, kind of denotes that we're a banana republic almost. And, and uh, I think people... And a banana republic... It's exactly what this document prevents us from being. But the only way we cannot be a banana republic is if we hold our, our elected officials, including Donald Trump, to answering to us as a people in the very method that is outlaid right here. And that means not devouring our, 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 our fellow citizens who, who demand that Donald Trump quit speaking to us in riddles and quit using the Socratic method to have, you know, common core curriculum, uh, you know, small group consensus being drawn by, by crumbs. Come out and talk to us. Come out and tell us what's going on. Put, the, put, put your money where your mouth is, you guys who want to make America great again. This is, this is the, the thing that made America great. You can't, uh, you can't uh, applaud the subversion of this document and expect anything other than trouble. I mean, it, this is exactly the, the problem that we're fighting against. And what I'm finding with Q is that this QAnon is getting people to applaud very, very different behaviors, very different outcomes. It's convincing us that we're the judge and jury. It's convincing us that, 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 that we know who the bad guys are. So when we see them shipped off to Guantanamo Bay, we're applauding. That subverts everything that matters to us that ever made our country great in the first place. It gets us to devour our own when we have people who disagree with us. You guys, I'm seeing something very troubling here with QAnon. I'm seeing something very troubling, and people are not slowing down to think about the direction that they're going in. But I'm saying that I think that maybe this might be a psyop for that very reason. Get us to overthrow our government. And just like I said to, the, to those idiots in Antifa, you know, just like I said to them in that one video I did, where I, I was like, you guys... You know, if you want to overthrow our, go our government, then figure out who it is you're going to put in place there. You know, just like I said to those guys right here, you guys are walking into a trap, you know, and it's time to, to start understanding where your actions are taking you and who's pushing you in those Over directions. Way. Okay. Who's pushing you into these directions? The things that you're applauding and the things that you're, you're, you're cheering for are very dangerous for our country. And I'm just cautioning people to use their head and actually just, just start to think about this.